Welcome back for yet another exciting and fun-filled C-Sharp web tutorial. This one I'm going to show you and walk you through a trumpet vine calculator. In case you are not familiar with trumpet vines are a invasive and aggressive vine that can sometimes in the right conditions double its length for every year it's been planted. So we have a, a, um, a form that's a pretty big, pretty big one. It's a long one. We have two text boxes that the user is going to enter in the starting length of the vine and how many years to project its length, and it gives a projected length. We have five buttons, one to show you how to do the coding of a for loop, the while loop, and the do while loop, as well as the clear and exit. Here, you can see we have a list box, and notice the Hungarian notation for a list box is LST, list output. I have a label here that explains what a trumpet vine can do and I actually uploaded two pictures. How I got the pictures into here is in the controls you will see a picture box. I brought the picture box in to the project and then I click on it and I was able to navigate to where I found the picture and then it actually included the picture as part of the project. Alright, so I also have a second trumpet vine so you can kind of visualize what it looks like. So, we also do three different types of data validation in this piece of code. In this one, we do a try catch. This one, we do a uh, try parse, and we do a negated or negative try parse. All right, so you understand you got uh, two text boxes. You're going to put in a length in years. You're going to click one of these loop buttons. You could also click the clear and exit if you wanted to. And it will give a projected length over the period of time, and it will also give you the detail of what each year would um, yield in growth. So let's take a look at the for loop. We come in here. My four easy steps, declare. We declare all our variables. I didn't use a short or a byte because if it doubles in length every year, you can quickly go beyond the maximum capacity for a byte or short. Okay, let's take a quick look at the try catch. Remember, this piece of code means I'm going to try this and if it works, it will skip over the try. Kind of like if else in a way. If something goes wrong, we'll have the code here. This will be the message. This will be the title. This will be the, what kind of button I want, an OK, and the message box. Notice four things, all separated by commas, not semicolons. And because this is a method, it's all enclosed within um, parentheses. If I were you, I would cut and paste this code and use it in my own changing it. This is something new right here this.txt. What this does is gets the name or of, not sorry, the name, but gets whatever you put here on the text property of the form. Isn't that cool? Alright, so let's get back here. So I'm going to try converting this to this text box text to an integer. If it works, great. If not, you get this error message and we get out of the routine and we don't do any more. We try to validate the number of years. Take the text, years, convert to integer. Something goes wrong, this code goes up, else it skips over it. Okay, with the for loop, I start at 1. As long as the count is less than or equal to how many years I'm projecting, and here's how I increment. Remember the three I's? Initialize, iterate, increment. So I take the length that was entered, multiply it by 2, and store it into the length. And I'm going to have to move this over a little bit so you can see. Right here, we add to the items in the list box items add we get the count we put we concatenate or plus this text and then we add and concatenate the length to string notice I make everything to string so I can kinda build it and then this loop will keep executing till it's no more and then I put out to the screen in the text box what the maximum length will be let's put a breakpoint here so we can see what happens I'm gonna put it right here, click in the gutter. Let's run this baby. Here we go. This is my form looks sexy and beautiful. I'm going to put in starts in two, and we're going to see in four years what the projected length is. And actually, I'm going to put bad data in just so you can get an idea of what it will do. It tries to convert it. Does not notice it goes to the catch. Okay message, title, the OK button, and the X. All controlled through here. Click OK. Notice I select all, focus, and I return. 
and I get out and I'm just going to fix it. See how it's all highlighted because I told it to do it. You kind of know what the error handling does, so I'm going to skip over it. We're going to go to the for loop. Let's step through the code hitting F10. Notice it will work and it skips over the catch. Tries to convert this. It goes successful. Skips over that. We start at 1. As long as 1 is less than or equal to 4 for years, we go into the loop, we multiply it, we put it out to the list box, and then we come here, add 1 to the count. Is the count which is 2 less than or equal to 4? That's true, so we enter the loop. We double the length again, we increment it. Is 3 less than or equal to 4? And the answer is yes. And then we go through the loop. Now our count is 5. Is 5 less than or equal to 4? No. So we skip out of the loop, and there we go. Isn't that beautiful? We ask for 4 years, we get 4 years of data. Let's go look at the while loop coding. Oh, we're still in debug mode, so I'm just going to hit F5. I'm going to go back and look at the form. Let's click, let's look at the while loop. Notice we do a if else, which are the try parse, not the try catch. We say, take this text box, the text, try parsing it into an integer, and if it works, put the converted numeric length in here. If it works, it returns back true, and we don't need to do anything. Else, we have a message box pop up. And we do the same thing for the year. Down here, notice I set the count to 1. As long as it's less than or equal to years, this code is exactly the same. The only thing we have to do different is increment. If you notice in the for loop, we increment it up here. Here we do it within the body of the loop. So let's put a breakpoint here so we can see what happens. Let's run this baby. We're going to do two. And for simplicity, we're just going to go for three years. Click on the while loop. And I actually didn't put bad data in, so I'll see how it worked. A string 2 could be converted to a 2 integer. The only thing that can be converted is 0 through 9 and the decimal point. No commas, no dollar signs. We successfully converted that. We come down here, we start the loop. Is 1, which we set here, less than the number of years? The answer is yes. We double the length, we put it out to the list box, we increment our counter, we go back up. Is 2 less than or equal to 3? Yep, we produce produce. We actually go through the loose and produce the results. Okay, we come up. The counter is 4. Is 4 less than 3? No. Notice we skip the loop and we come out and I'm going to hit a 5. Beautiful. Now, let's go take a look at the do while. Do you remember the difference between a for loop and a while and a do while? A do while always executes once. The for loop will only execute if the condition is true. The same thing with the while. So let's watch. Right here, everything's the same. Now, all I did with this is I put this little exclamation point here. By doing that, if this works, it returns back true. The exclamation negates it or makes the, um, the true. Uh, yes, the true, if it works. I got a little tongue tied there, sorry. If this works, it returns true, and we make it false. So this would only happen if it's true. If this doesn't work, it returns back false. The false negated makes it true, and that's how we get the message box. So see, this is just like the other piece of code, but notice there's no other than this. I don't have a dummy true part in the else part. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. Okay, And the same thing here. You can just cut and paste this and put in your code. All you have to do is change the uh, text box and the text box here and here and what kind of data type. If you wanted a byte, you'd have to put a byte here and a byte data type here. Now notice the do loop will drop in and I set the count to zero. So we come through, then we increment. I increment from zero to one, so when I put it out to the screen in the list box, you'll see one. Let's, put, let's just see this code execute. Okay, we're going to put two. We're only going to go for two years. We're going to start with two feet and go for two years. I'm going to put bad data so you can see how this works. And step through. Now this will return back. It did not work. So then I'm going to make the the false true and make the message box come up. I know it's confusing. If you don't like this approach, use the try catch or use the if int try parse without the negation. You have three ways to do it, 
notice the message box comes up, I click OK, come back, come back, come back, and I'm out. I fix my bad data, and we do the do while loop. So that works. This should work. And now look, I enter the loop. No check. The check's down here. So you always go in. You come through. We take the length, double it. It's up to four. Now I go from zero, plus plus is one. So when I put out to the screen, it will say one projected length is, and put it out. Now look, it checks. Is one less than the number of years. You don't say less than or equal to with a do while because it always goes through once. So no less than or equal to, just less than. Come back up. Boom, boom, boom. We incremented it. It's two. It's two less than two. No, it's equal to, so it's false and it will not repeat the loop and we are out of there. And let's see the results. There you go. I strongly recommend you look at this code and you borrow the pieces you need for your projects, especially, especially the loop compounding. This will help you greatly, I hope.